Martin Truex Jr. may have had the biggest season or at least playoff collapse since this postseason's inception. And many may look back at the Chase era and other playoff eras and say, well, maybe that wasn't it. Maybe it was Kyle Busch in 2008. Maybe it was Kevin Harvick in 2020. But for many, this is the magnum opus of season collapses. And I think what a lot of us need to ask and a lot of people have been asking is, how did this happen? How did somebody who looked to be a championship lock, somebody who we all knew was gonna be fighting for that championship at Phoenix in November, how did he basically become irrelevant for the majority of the playoffs? And how did he get outperformed by 20 or so other drivers in the field every week? Well. Let's take a bit of a closer look. First off, I want to talk about a big factor in all of this. We have a much closer field in the next gen era than we ever have before. The next gen is a spec car. And with it, when you have minuscule changes in a positive or negative direction, they can have major swings both ways. And it's not the biggest reason, but it makes the falls now a little more exaggerated than they were before. Also, you have to look at the regular season in two parts, the opening seven races and the final 19. The opening seven races showed Truex with one top 10 finish, capped off by Richmond, where James Small made a bad call with tires, which basically pushed him from an easy top five finish to a sub 10th place finish in that race. Many people early on, including myself, were saying, maybe this pairing isn't gonna work out. Maybe they're just not on it the way that they've been in the past. But in the part two of the regular season, the last 19 races before Daytona, they went on a tear. 18 starts before Daytona saw two wins, nine top fives and 13 top tens with 755 laps led. Extrapolate that over a 36 race season and it would have been four wins, 18 top five, 26 top tens and over 1500 laps led. So you can accuse them of putting half a season together, or you can say they got their act together. But either way, because of this elite, consistent, and winning performance, they were expected to carry it into the playoffs. And in years past, Martin Truex Jr. has done that. We've seen him become one of the most elite drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series. But round by round, we started to see things fall apart. Starting with the first round, Darlington. This one, in my opinion, is on the team. The car ran really bad all night. They didn't score any stage points, but because of the playoff points that they had accrued from a great regular season, as well as wins and stage wins, it didn't matter too much, and it just seemed like a one-off from there. But Kansas is where people started to worry. Maybe not justifiably, but they did because Kansas would see Truex have this happen, in only three laps, a flat tire, ending his day, a last place finish, and that's two bad races starting out. The first one, yeah, that's on team. That might be even on the driver if he can't drive the car the way it's set up. You can have your arguments either way about it. This one, it's just bad luck. A tire got punctured and there was nothing really you can do about it. But Bristol is kind of where I think a lot of people started to worry. Again, Truex would lag behind, be outside the top 10, no stage points, any of that. And this was only made more exaggerated by the fact that Joe Gibbs Racing with Ty Gibbs, Denny Hamlin, who won the race, and Christopher Bell would lead a combined 431 of the 500 laps in the Bristol night race, while Truex was MIA. And it's pretty clear at that point that the first three races of the playoffs, he was fourth of the four JGR drivers. That team, driver, everyone just did not show up. But they were able to make it to the next round and skate through. The round of two was where things sort of recovered, but the narrative started to get written even more in stone. At Texas, it seemed like the team was improving, but after a stage yellow ended, one that they did not score much at all on, they got spun under yellow. And that is something they never could recover from, another mediocre run for Truex and team. At Talladega, they just got stuck in the pack at the end. I don't really wanna say it's anything too big per se, it's a super speedway race, and he ultimately would just 
kind of like the first four races, do just enough to stay over that line. He didn't wreck out, but it just was not a fun run. The Roval is where things started to turn a bit. He got 10 stage points, ran pretty well at different points, but still, because of bad strategy and not having a car that could pass enough, would have to skate by to the next round again, making it to the round of eight. A lot of people were confused by this. How did he make it in? Well, in the first two rounds, especially that first round, the playoffs kind of promote mediocrity. The bad drivers are going to get eliminated in the round of 16. The ones who do not belong or have just had horrible runs in two or three of the three races. Mediocre runs can keep you above water in the round of 12 because of the wild card mentality. The Roval and Talladega will take out a lot of people, and so will Texas. As long as you don't DNF, you're pretty safe if you have enough playoff points like Truex did. The round of eight, though, that is a difficult part. At Las Vegas, they did score six stage points, but terrible strategy put him outside the top 15 for much of the day, causing him to have a hard charge at the end of ninth, but leaving points on the table. At Homestead, they actually had one of the best cars out there. Top five and top 10 all day long, locked up a lot of stage points, looked really good for the final four until 30 to go. That's when they lost an engine. At that point, a whole team deal has brought them down. And coming into Martinsville, you're 17 points out. Now, the first stage was pretty good. Top three in stage one, keeping up with Blaney and Denny Hamlin, who were the two best cars of the day. But between the jack falling on a pit stop and speeding on pit road, he was buried in the field and with the difficulty to pass of the short track package, and also Blaney and Hamlin being the best two cars out there, the playoff push was over. Now, one other thing I want to talk about that I brought up in a positive light can also be used in a negative. Truex, yes, had a lot of stage points accrued over the regular season and playoff points, but he had a lot less playoff points than the usual one seed going in, and this was an unusual year when it came to that. Because of that, he more had the stage points built up and the playoff points built up of someone who was usually a second, third, or fourth seed in the playoffs. So because it was a bit of a weaker field at the top, that also was a factor that played into it. But that's really what happened. In my opinion, a lot of it was out of the team's control, but a lot of it was in their control. And ultimately, because of their lack of execution, they were not able to make it into the next round, into the final four. And in all honesty, they don't deserve to since they really only put half a season together. Now, with this, I want to pass it on to you and ask, is this, in your opinion, the biggest collapse to a season ever in NASCAR? And do you think Martin Truex Jr. is going to recover in 2024? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support, and until next time, have a good one.